Uh, so today, uh, I have dusted off the old Evoc 20 polysynth. The Evoc 20 is a essentially a vocoder. It's a synthesizer on its own, but it, it can take like a sidechain source from a microphone or from an audio recording. You input that in, uh, in the analysis input, and then it sort of blends the synthesizer with the amplitude and, and some of the, the noise and diction in, in your voice. Evoc 20 is certainly not like the best sounding vocoder out there. It's definitely better used for like real gritty, grimy uh, vocoder tones. But what I want to focus on in this video is not on what everything in here does, because again, I've already done tutorials on that if you want to really dive into all the, the details. This thing hasn't changed in a, a long time. It's basically identical to what it was in Logic 9. So, you know, if, if you go back and watch one of my old tutorials, um, you can figure out what all of this stuff in here is. In this video, though, I want to sort of take a different approach and use uh, Evoc 20 as sort of like a compositional tool for, you know, coming up with cool rhythms and, and um, you know, it's, it's less about what chords I'm playing and more about what rhythm I'm producing with my voice because it follows the amplitude of your voice, the volume of your voice, attack and decay and sustain and release the, the, the whole envelope of your voice is taken into account with the synthesizer. So I, I find that really cool. And so because it's so gritty and grimy and old school, you can't really understand words very well uh, through it. There are a few presets that that work better than others. But what I found is that if I just kind of don't even say any words, just use like like different rhythms and I'm just mouthing different rhythms. Like, let me give you an example. <laughs> Like for me, that's what it's really useful for coming up with cool, um, grimy musical ideas that have this kind of vocal component to it, this vocal element to it, but not necessarily singing particular lyrics or anything like that. A quick pause before we get started. I need to quickly tell you about the long term sponsor of the channel, Boombox. Boombox is the ultimate platform for musicians, bands, and producers who want to enhance their collaboration, promotion, and creative process. I've been using Boombox for the past two years for my mixing and production clients, and it has been fantastic for file exchange, file storage, and aggregating all of my client and collaboration feedback into one place. You can even create your own custom inbox to receive files from collaborators who don't have a paid Boombox account. And that's only just a small part of what Boombox has to offer. You can build artist pages, handle contracts and royalties, create shareable playlists, and get creative with Boombot AI, your personal virtual co-writer that can help you generate musical ideas, lyrics, and even split stems. Head over to boombox.io and claim your four gigabytes of free storage when you sign up today. So let me show you how this thing works, um, how you can get set up like this. Basically what you need is a microphone, an audio interface. You wanna use headphones for this, a MIDI controller of some kind. And what you're gonna start off by doing, and I'll just start completely from scratch here, is you create a new software instrument. On that software instrument, you're gonna load up the Evoc 20. You can find it right here. And by default, this is just gonna load up as a synthesizer. So you can just play in MIDI notes just like any other instrument. Again, it's kind of gritty and grimy sounding. In order to get your microphone into the Evoc 20, there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could use an audio track and record something to an audio track. You can use this in real time with an aux track. Uh, and you can actually use it without the voice. You can really use any uh, audio source can be used to trigger the uh, the envelope of, of the Evoc 20. So then what you need to do is you need to tell the Evoc 20 to accept its uh, analysis input from that aux track or from the input. So you can go here to input, go to, to input one, and all you have to do is play some notes on your MIDI controller and talk into your mic except there's one more step. Here where it says signal, change this over to vocoder. Check one. Hey, what's up everyone? Hey, hey. Ba -da -ba, ba -da -ba, ba -da -ba. Let's go up an octave.
So the other thing you can do is we can, you know, change up the sound so we get a tone that we like a little bit better. I just recommend going into the vintage vocoder settings or warped vocoder settings and finding, um, you know, a patch that you like. So, you know, whether you're being pitch accurate or not doesn't really matter uh, too much because what you're hearing, uh, what you're uh, eventually going to hear is just the sound of the vocoder interpreting, you know, the amplitude or the, the envelope of your voice. Let's try a different one here. Let's try this deep modulation. All of the pitches are being controlled by the MIDI controller. Now, how do you record this um, if you actually wanted to do something musical with this? Um, the aux track here is actually not even necessary. Yeah, so here I've got an audio track. This will be my voice. When you use the, the Evoc 20 with an audio track, you'll see that uh, the audio track shows up here as a sidechain source now, as an analysis input source. And that's where our voice is going to be coming from now. Because if you just record with this, like on input one, and you just hit record and you don't record the audio, the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to record your MIDI notes, but it's not going to record the audio. So we have to record the MIDI and the audio separately. Um, so you can, there's a, you know, there's a few different workflows. There's a few different ways you can do this. You could, you could keep this on input one um, and then just record your voice down here separately uh, and then change it over to audio. Um, you could even just take the output from the instrument directly and print it down to another track. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and uh, do a, a, a quick musical example. And I'm gonna try to be like really harsh with my transients that they really cut through. <laughs> Okay, so that was a little crazy. Uh, it was probably the closest thing to rapping you're going to get from me. Yeah, so all sorts of weird and strange and gritty and grimy things you can do with Evoc 20. I just wanted to do this tutorial just to show you this because it, it's kind of a cool tool. It's a very niche tool. Again, it's, you know, not everyone's cup of tea. You've got to be creative with it. And you also have to kind of work within the limitation of the instrument itself because it's it's an old instrument. It's very limited in uh, its sound output. Um, but, you know, you add a few effects. You come up with some interesting rhythms. Another thing that's, uh, that I didn't do in this video that's really cool uh, to do with Evoc 20 is to run drum loops through it and drum beats through it. You can do some really cool stuff with that. Um, and really any sort of like percussive transient heavy material can work with this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.